It could bring back the EFF as its partner and say, well, let's govern together. And the EFF would then eat the ANC for breakfast, spit out its leaders and take over completely. As the South African state continues to weaken, could we see a fragmentation of the country in the future? And what would this future look like? In this extract from a longer conversation on my podcast, Solutions with David Ansara, I spoke with Dr. Franz Grenier, Director of the Center for Risk Analysis, about the potential for a post-ANC future and what this would mean for individuals and communities in South Africa. If you enjoyed this analysis, you might want to check out the full conversation on my podcast. We'll put a link to that in the description below. Enjoy. How does this play out in terms of various election scenarios? What might we see in the future in terms of if the ANC continues to weaken and decline, what might replace it? Okay, ANC is weakening and declining. You see that in the polling. And the enthusiasm at the moment for postponing the local elections in October is a function of the fear of running into those. Because what could happen in October is that the ANC's overall score will be below 50%. And that psychologically will be a very important moment for the country because it will mean that everyone, every commentator, every analyst, every business leader, investor, ordinary person, whatever it is, will be thinking that these guys are done. And that kind of thinking often becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy, meaning that the ANC could lose the election of 2024. That is if we continue to hold elections on time when we should hold elections. It's very dangerous to propose uh, scrapping and suspending a, an election. It's an excuse, the COVID pandemic, we queue for social grants, the shops and restaurants are open, the kids have been sent back to school, and, and the government's starting to say it would be too dangerous to hold an election. Uh, that, that, that's, you can see what's going on here. It's dangerous. Enjoying this analysis? Click here to sign up for our 30-day free trial for more content from the CIA. If elections aren't interfered with, and uh, the opposition starved of funds, which this new funding uh, legislation is having the effect of doing, what's simply going to happen is the ANC is going to lose the national election, perhaps in 2024. Uh, that was the first, we made that call in 2014. We said it would be 2024. If it's not, then there's no way they're still in power at the end of the decade. They go in 2029. What happens after the ANC's defeat is, is practical. Uh, think about it. The, the ANC's now got 40-something percent of the vote. It could bring back the EFF as its partner and say, well, let's govern together. And the EFF would then eat the ANC for breakfast, spit out its leaders, and take over completely. If we then still remain, had a, keep by a massive effort of activists, uh, civil rights activists, the basic trappings of democracy, the economic consequences of the EFF in government will be so devastating that the collective ANC-EFF will lose the next election. So you remove them both, uh, two birds with one stone. Alternatively, the ANC tries to make a deal with one of the smaller parties or two or three of them. It's only going to be short a few percentage points. It says, well, let's build a, a coalition together. Those coalitions will break up and fall apart. Third option is all the opposition parties get together and say, well, let's freeze the ANC out of government. That's also going to be a shambles if you think of how the DA's attempts at coalition with the EFF played out in, in Johannesburg. So after the ANC has gone below 50, you should anticipate a, a, a five-year period or so of, of, of a shambles. But, but, but it's already, I mean, under the ANC, government is a shambles. Just look at the, 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 the economic recovery strategy is based on an expropriation plan. The, 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 the blow-up in Natal saw the defence minister say there wasn't a coup. The president said there was. The police minister's uh, 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 the, the intelligence minister said he warned the police minister who said he never received the warning. I mean, there's a keystone uh, 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 cops 
at, at work here. It's really a shambles. We'll stay a shambles in coalition. What then needs to happen or will happen is one of two things. Either someone puts a vast amount of backing behind a new political alternative for the country. It must be centre-right, fairly conservative, because that resonates with public opinion. It kind of needs to reflect what the gear policy of the ANC was in its first decade in government. So policy was mainly pragmatic, sought to draw investment, to grow the economy. There were, of course, huge internal contradictions, and all of that we're aware of. If you get such a new party, it could become dominant in a coalition, and it could then hook up with the Democratic Alliance, which since its leadership transition of, uh, of a little while ago is in much better shape ideologically to offer an alternative to the ANC. And perhaps that new political alternative is born out of the old kind of Mbeki era of the ANC. And if you say they weren't that conservative, uh, I'll say to you, they recorded a budget surplus. That is about the most conservative thing any government can do. And this new coalition kind of DA plus these sort of new kind of, you know what, what I describe them as, um, they could govern the country quite successfully. Uh, get a bit of foreign bailout financing late into this decade, into the 2030s, rebuild institutions in South Africa could become a success. If that does not happen, and we're left in the grip of either a collapsing ANC, clinging to power via cheating its way to victories, or a shambolic coalition made up of everyone all fighting with each other, what happens then is that the authority of the state, the ability to govern, will recede. Now, the image I want you to have is of the country, and it, and, and it starts with, with the government exerting its influence all over the country. And as this coalition becomes more of a shambles and things fall apart and we're cheating in elections and we've run out of money and it's trying to expropriate everything in sight, the authority of the state begins to recede until ultimately there is still a government, but it sits in Pretoria in the union buildings and it governs over the buildings and the gardens. And outside of the fence, it has no effective authority, just like was the case in Natal 10 days ago. Those vacuums will be filled. The, the uh, nature abhors it and politics abhors a vacuum question is, what fills these vacuums as the state retreats? You saw the answer in the Natal protests. The most powerful local actors take upon themselves what were once the functions of the state. So the taxi industry, that's very powerful. It's very well organized, very efficient business model. Uh, it doesn't pay much in tax, which shows you how well organized and efficient it is and it transports millions of people around the country cost-effectively every day. I mean, this is, this is capitalism at its absolute greatest. And the, the taxi industry started supplying security services to communities. In Umschlanga, the residents uh, appeared and set up roadblocks to maintain uh, uh, order. Uh, the owners of businesses got their communities together and they surrounded their businesses with militia who, who maintained uh, order. This is what happens as the state's authority recedes. And when it recedes permanently, these new groups become the permanent new authorities. They do what the state used to do. And they'll do it on a small scale. So it will be like a honeycomb of, of I think of the country was one big hole. It becomes this honeycomb of what we call enclaves. And enclaves are communities where ordinary people have stepped into the gap left by the retreating. And they are now looking after their own security. They're also looking after their own infrastructure. So they're fixing the waterworks and they're filling the potholes. They're probably looking after their own schools in as far as they can to ensure that their kids have a decent education, and so on and so forth. And what you end up with is a federal dispensation, not run by any government, 
but run by communities that have become independent and have become quite robust. And should it happen that the ANC loses an election and refuses to go or cheats to cling to power, or that it goes but is replaced purely by a shambolic coalition, this enclave future that we describe, I am pretty certain, will become a dominant feature of the communities that many South Africans live in, uh, David. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this conversation, you might want to check out the full discussion with Franz Grenier that's linked over here and in the description below. I'd also be really grateful if you could subscribe to my other channel that's linked over here. My name is David Ansara. This is the Center for Risk Analysis. Until next time, take care.